This evening, we are going to talk about a few things, but the first thing that I'd like to talk about is my t-shirt. So the t-shirt reads Crew Love. Crew Love is a company up in New York City. They're a wine marketing company. They work with brands to help them promote themselves. And Crew Love was actually founded by Jermaine Stone. Um, Jermaine Stone also runs a podcast. And in his podcast, he interviews people that represent brands. He interviews sommeliers. And the thing that he does that's really a point of interest is he actually pairs wine on the podcast with hip hop music. So he's, he's really doing something different, something cool, and he's actually opening up wine um, to a bigger demographic as a result of that. So um, really interested in what Jermaine is doing up there and want to support it. So uh, check out Crew Love for some interesting uh, wine and hip hop pairings. Um, with that, we'll get into the agenda for the video. So I'm going to give a brief launch update and then I'm going to talk about a producer that I'm working with in Sardinia. And I'm excited to work with them and I'm excited to tell you about it. So first order of business is on the launch. Um, if you follow Wide Roots on Instagram, or Facebook, you may have been aware through the stories that I was successful in locating warehouse space in Maryland that's suitable for warehousing wine. And with that, I am able to start my licensing process to be a distributor here in Maryland. Um, and that's exciting to me because it gives me the option to work with other distributors in the state. Um, I'm currently in talks with the distributor at the moment, but it also gives me the ability to self-distribute and so I've got that flexibility which means I stay true to my launch timing of being in market here in Maryland in January so stay tuned uh, we're going to make this go live a weekly feature on Thursdays at 6 and I'll be introducing you to the producers that I'm working with and so that brings me to this week's topic uh, this week's topic is a producer that I'm working with in Sardinia, or as the Italians call it, Sardinia. And so if you look at Sardinia on a map, actually to the west of the Italian peninsula and a little bit to the south, um, Sardinia uh, is interesting from a winemaking perspective for a few reasons. One is that Sardinia has these really interesting ancient grape varietals. So you think about it, people have been making wine from the grapes that grow there indigenously for thousands of years, which means they have thousands of years to really perfect what they're doing. Uh, and you've got native varietals to Sardinia, uh, like the white varietal, Noricus. I posted about that yesterday. Uh, if you like dry, crisp, unoaked white wines, um, check out Noricus if you can find it, and hopefully soon we'll have some of that here in the market. Uh, another red varietal is Monica, uh, which is a medium bodied uh, red wine that has a lot of character to it, a lot of interesting character and complexity. The other interesting thing about Sardinia, from a winemaking perspective, is its climate. So we go back to the map and we look at locations. So you're at a southerly uh, location, relatively speaking. You see we're about parallel to uh, Calabria, or the toe of the boot, in Italy. And the result of that means you get these long sunny days, so good sun exposure for the grapes. In addition, if you're familiar with the, the Rhone and the Northern Rhone in particular, you may have heard of something called the Mistral winds. The, the Mistral winds are, um, they originate in the Alps and they blow down through the Rhone Valley and so the Rhone Valley, another southerly location in the south of France. You have these wonderful Syrahs that you get there because they have long sunny days with this cooling effect of the Mistral. Well, the Mistral makes its way down through chateauneuf de pape the southern Rhone, into the Mediterranean and all the way down to Sardinia. And the effect of that is, again, the climate, you have long sunny days, good sun exposure, and, and then, Alternative, and then at the same time, 
uh, you've got this cooling effect from the sea and from the mistral wind. And that, what that means is that you get a lot of complexity in the fruit flavors. So you get these fresh, ripe fruit flavors, but they're also coupled with kind of like a baked element and it creates some complexity and some really interesting things in those wines. So Sardinia, um, worth checking out. A couple other varietals that we'll talk about. Um, Vermentino, we're going, we're going to taste actually. We'll taste both of them. Vermentino is a, a white varietal. Again, if you like those dry, crisp, unoaked white wines like a Sauvignon Blanc, you, need, you really need to try Vermentino. It's a very characterful uh, white wine. A lot of complexity and again, very crisp and, and, and dry. Uh, and then Cannonau is a red varietal. It's a regionally important varietal. It's genetically the same as Grenache, which grows in the Southern Rhone, um, and Garnacha in Spain. Um, and it is the, the Sardinian version, which is called Cannonau, the grape is called Cannonau there, is uniquely Sardinian um, in some of the herbal characters that it picks up as well as the fruit. So worth checking out, and that brings me to the producer. So, the name of the producer that I will be working with is a family-owned winemaker down in the southeast of Sardinia, near Cagliari. Um, their name is Adaria. Uh, Adaria um, essentially uh, speaks to respect for the land and authenticity of the traditions. And as a family winemaker, that's they stay very true to that. They're very proud of the wines that they make from those varietals that I just talked about because they are authentically Sardinian. They couple these traditions that go back a long, long time, but then they also, as a wine producing, in the production of their wines, uh, they treat their grapes very gently through the process. They handle it gently. And, and the result of that is that it really preserves the aromatic characters and the flavor characters of the wines very nicely. So um, it is a family, it's a family winery um, and we're gonna talk about their wines a little bit. So the first wine is uh, a Venermentino. I'll show you the bottle here. Um, it's a little rabbit guy on the label, very cool label. And this is a very nice, um, crisp, dry white wine. The aromas essentially jump right out of the glass. Uh, it, it's literally this glass was sitting here next to me and I could, I could smell the wine. Um, and I just love the complexity of this wine. So I, I tasted this with um, Nicoletta of the Paula family and the Paula family runs a Daria. And I described this wine to her as though I was standing in a field of wildflowers and I was tasting this amazingly crisp, um, complex fruit wine, a uh, little bit of baked bread there, and then uh, some minerality from, from the soil of the land. And there's a lot going on with this white wine. This is a great pairing um, with some you know, medium ripe type cheeses, some seafood, uh, although Sardinia is actually, despite being an island, a land of shepherds. So Vermentino uh, from Sardinia, this is one of the, it's, for some people this can be kind of like a wow wine because it just um, really is very characterful. There are Vermentinos made from outside of Sardinia uh, in other parts of Italy, most notably Liguria up in the northwest, um, as well as Toscana and some of the other regions. And then the second wine that I have to try here is actually, I'm sorry, wrong bottle. Um, it is the Monica, the Sardinia. So we got a little zebra guy on the label. Uh, Monica, again, an ancient uh, indigenous varietal of grape. And we're gonna try this. So this is a medium body wine. Uh, it's unoaked and uh, it really allows that fruit character to shine through. Uh, you get some dried rose on the nose there, uh, as well as uh, some minerality from the soil. A uh, little bit of an herbal character. Uh, this is the wine of choice of Enrico Paola, who is the, the patriarch of the family. That's his everyday 
drinking wine. And what he pairs this with is this dish that I prepared called Kohler Jones. Uh, you can kind of see it here, but I don't want to spill it on the camera. Um, Kohler Jones are like little um, dumplings uh, similar to ravioli. They're, it's stuffed with a potato filling. It's got a little bit of cheese and mint and basil and just a pinch of nutmeg in there. Um, and when I post this video, um, actually when, it, when, when I post the, the final version of the video, I'm actually going to show um, my horrible Kohler Jones making technique. This is paired with a simple tomato based sauce with a little bit of basil, garlic, um, and onion, but I'll also pair it with some pesto. It will go wonderfully um, with these wines. So uh, again, I'm really excited to be working with the Paula family and uh, excited to bring their wines here to Maryland. Um, they're already present in some markets in the US, so uh, look for Adaria wines and look for Sardinian wines. They're definitely worth exploring. Uh, so we're gonna close it down, but I'd like to thank everybody who's followed Wine Roots. Um, we're obviously at the very beginning of our journey, um, but I appreciate you being along for the ride and I look forward to interacting with you and please, if you have any questions about wine or what we're doing here, um, feel free to direct message me through uh, either the Instagram or Facebook platform. With that, I'm going to enjoy my dinner. I hope you enjoy yours. So thanks again for joining. We'll see you next time. Ciao. Arrivederci.